Before we get started today, I wanted to ask you a favor. I want you to check out the link I shared in my newsletter, the show notes, and in the information section of the YouTube video. C.L. Carhart is sharing Veiled Magic for free with readers who sign up for her newsletter. Just as a reminder, you can find the link in the show notes if you're listening to this as a podcast, in the info section if you're listening, watching this on YouTube, and also in my newsletter. Go show C.L. Carhart some love and check out her book. Hey everyone, I'm Jules Corsair and this is the Jules Corsair Audio Newsletter. This episode, The State of Silver Orb Books, is about my plans for the upcoming year. Initially, I plan to send my publishing plans for 2023 out via my newsletter. But who really wants to skim through a wall of text when they can listen to me instead? Today, I'm covering the changes I'll be making for 2023, my publishing plans for 2023, and what you can expect from me and my books in 2023. In 2022, I spent a lot of time evaluating what was working for me and what wasn't. And the reason I did this was because something happened and writing no longer brought me the same joy it used to. I needed to understand why I didn't enjoy writing anymore and figure out when it became a chore and what I could do to bring back the level of joy and excitement I had when I began planning for and writing the Sentinels of the Silver Orb universe. I concluded that the current advice for publishing has sapped all the enjoyment from writing for me, and I needed to switch things up. Either I had to leave writing behind or I needed to come up with a new plan that worked for both me as a writer and you as a reader. So, without further ado, let's get on with the state of Silver Orb books. In the words of Vixen, I'm going to rip the band-aid off and deliver the bad news first. I will no longer give books away for free unless they are part of a special promotion. The list of what I consider free includes ARCs, otherwise known as advanced reader copies, bonus epilogues, or requests for free copies from readers. Now, I have something else planned as a gift for signing up for my newsletter, and I plan on offering it to current subscribers as well, and I'll reveal it later in the month. Access to ARCs is the main reason for signing up for my newsletter. I recommend unsubscribing for my newsletter. I've included a large red button with the word unsubscribe on it at the top of the newsletter. You can find it just below the link to this audio recording. Now. I hope you don't unsubscribe and stick around for this new plan for 2023 with me, but I understand if you decide to unsubscribe. If you're still here, thanks, I appreciate it. I'm also going to give you fair warning. This recording is about my plans for 2023, and you may not be happy with any of them, so you might want to keep that unsubscribe button close by. I hope you don't unsubscribe and stick around for all of 2023, but I totally get it if you don't. The second big change for 2023 is how I will be launching my books. In October and November of this year, I tested out an idea and new way of publishing, and I discovered that this way has the potential to be the ideal solution, meaning the joy of writing returned for me and I can give even more to readers than just books. Fair warning, this might be a second band-aid being ripped off and send a few more people to the unsubscribe button. Again, I completely understand, but I hope you decide to stick around. So, moving forward, I will be launching all my books on Kickstarter. Yep, you heard me correctly. Initially, I will launch my books on Kickstarter. Once the campaign is complete and all the digital content has been delivered to backers, I will make the books available for sale on my own website. Eventually, the books will make their way to the usual retailers such as Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and the others, but there will be a significant delay. And by significant, I mean months as opposed to weeks, which is one of the main reasons I'm no longer sending out ARCs in 2023. This doesn't mean my books won't eventually be available on retailers, but they won't be available right away. When I launched my first campaign on Kickstarter, I didn't offer any new books, but instead a special collector's edition omnibus hardcover. And you know what I discovered? There are readers on Kickstarter interested in my book both the physical books and the stories. For the first time in several years, I felt as though I wasn't attempting to climb my way out of a hole. 
where it seemed I'd never reach the top. For the first time in several years, I enjoyed every step of the publishing process, including the interior designs of the print books, engaging with the backers, and finding new and fun things to share with reader. This is something I haven't experienced since releasing Broken Hero, the first book in the Broken Beat Pack series. Something else happened during this campaign. I fell in love with my books all over again. As I've worked on the formatting, I found myself stopping what I was doing to read the words on the page and appreciate the story and the passion I used to have when I sat down to write. Somewhere along the way, I lost that passion, but Kickstarter brought it back. I want to be clear. I'm not delaying the publishing of my books to retailers to punish readers. The delay of my releases to retailers is more about rewarding those who are backing me on Kickstarter or buying for me direct. I'm doing this because I find the current state of publishing as Amazon has shaped it to be untenable to my well-being. I needed to make a change, and this means lessening my reliance on a retailer who has made it impossible to exist on their platform without paying an ever-increasing price for the privilege to have a book for sale on their site on a page filled with more filled more with ads than information about my book. You know what? This is a good time to take a break from my planned announcements to explain what Kickstarter is and how authors are using it. First, Kickstarter is not a donation platform. This isn't me or any other author asking for something and giving nothing in return. In fact, this is authors asking for support for a book project and then giving more than has ever been possible in return. Kickstarter is a way to crowdfund a project. And in the case of self-publishing, it's sort of similar to a pre-order situation with a lot of bells and whistles and bonus content we wouldn't normally be able to include using the traditional online retailers. Better yet, it's possible to offer multiple variations. Just want the ebook? There's a tier for that. Want more than one book in the series? There's a tier for that. Want all the bells and whistles and treats? There's a tier for that. Want a physical book? The campaign has you covered. Plus, with the way it works, I can offer personally signed books. What I can make available to backers, both fans of my writing and fans of books in general, is only limited by my own imagination. For my purposes, Kickstarter is like a pre-order situation, except that if the project doesn't fund, you don't get charged. Plus, Kickstarter demands transparency and holds project organizers accountable. Kickstarter is a win-win for both readers and authors. Kickstarter is also a public benefit corporation. This means that they put their mission ahead of profit. Their obligation isn't to maximizing profits at the expense of all else. Their obligation is to their mission statement, and that is bringing creative projects to life. And just to give you an idea about how great Kickstarter is, they set up a Zoom meeting available to any author who wanted to take part to discuss some of Kickstarter's plans for publishing projects. They listened to our suggestions and answered our questions. If that's not a good enough reason to get behind the move, a lot of self-publishers are making to launch their books on Kickstarter. I don't know what would be good enough. In my case, if the campaign funds, the ebooks, paperbacks, and hardbacks will be available on my website immediately after the campaign is completed, and I have fulfilled the rewards for backers. If the campaign doesn't fund, the ebooks and paperbacks will be available on my website, but it's likely that I'll delay the hardcovers. Which leads me to the next change in planning for 2023. I'm going to be opening my own store on my website. Currently, the traditional retailers, well, Amazon specifically, rewards authors for doing the fast food equivalent of publishing and punishes those who don't or those who don't have a large enough platform to eschew the fast food method. Now, there's nothing wrong with fast food. There are times when I'm making a late night run for a euros from Arby's or swinging by McDonald's on my way home to grab a Big Mac. I just don't want fast food for every meal. And it's definitely not my preference when it comes to storytelling and books. If I want to stop being reliant on the whims of companies like Amazon, I need to find a better way to deliver my books to readers, and that's where offering my books for sale directly on my website comes in. I plan on selling direct to readers. One struggle is finding the best host for a store. I wanted to make sure it could handle everything thrown its way and came with additional layers of security. Finally, after talking to a few people, 
I believe I found one who has delivered everything I needed and wanted. I also needed to find the best way to deliver digital content. For now, I'm using BookFunnel. But that's so I don't have to deal with the tech support for delivering content. If I thought it would be easier to allow for direct downloads, I would totally do that. Although I do have some content that will be available for sale as a direct download. I'll be using BookFunnel to deliver ebooks and other digital content and a shipping fulfillment service to handle the delivery of physical books. That means there won't be free shipping like Amazon, but it does mean that I can offer discounts and coupons without dealing with the potential wrath of Amazon. Now, before I launched the store, I wanted to make sure everything was in place, including using a reputable professional payment processor. So we're using Stripe to handle the financial side of the store. You can trust Stripe. They've been in business since 2009 and recently partnered with Ford to handle customer payments. I mentioned launching my new site in an earlier email and that we had delayed it because one of the testers managed to break it. Since it couldn't go live at the original launch date I had planned, I decided to step back and make sure everything was perfect. So the launch is planned for 2023, specifically in January. I'm so excited to be able to offer my books directly to readers, not just because this cuts up the middleman, but also because I can offer special editions, like an audio commentary for a book, coupons, and even a reader loyalty program. Plus, I plan on including additional merchandise, such as t-shirts and coffee mugs. These items will be added slowly and will likely coincide with my Kickstarter campaigns. If you're still here and haven't unsubscribed from my newsletter or stopped listening, thanks. So let's move on to my publishing plans for 2023. At the end of January, I planned on launching a campaign on Kickstarter to release the first two books of a brand new series. You've been hearing about these books for a while now. I'm probably giving up on them. Not that I blame you. I've been promising them for a while now. But I was never happy with the first book. It went through no less than five rewrites, five completely different versions of the same book. And I hated each and every version. Why? Because I was ready to meet some arbitrary deadline and an arbitrary word count. And the actual story stopped mattering. Then I stopped worrying about the deadline and the word count, and the story mattered again. I salvaged as much as I could from the other versions, but found it was better for me to start fresh. Wolf's Retribution and Wolf's Revenge will be released together on Kickstarter in February. The campaign will run for about three weeks, which is my plan for most of my campaigns. Then at the conclusion of the campaign, the books will be delivered to the backers. I'm planning on offering four different tracks, I guess you would call them. A digital track, a paperback track, a hardback track, and a book box track. The digital track will include two options, either book one or books one and two. Now, both options come with extra treats, including a printable bookmark, bonus short stories, and images of the covers, high res. The paperback track includes two options as well, either a signed copy of book one or signed copies of both book one and two. Just like the digital track, these options come with extra treats, including the ebook version, printable bookmarks, bonus short stories, high res images for covers, and you get the idea. The hardback track is the same as the paperback track. And finally, there's the book box track. These are the super special rewards. There's a virtual book box for ebooks, a book box for hardbacks, and a luxury book box that's limited to one backer. The book boxes include both books, all the treats within the track, plus a PDF of series Bible for books one and two, the backer's name and the acknowledgements for both books, the audiobooks when they're produced, and the physical physical books have sprayed edges that are signed with a personal message and special read-along gifts. The luxury book box includes everything in the book boxes, plus having a character based on the backer in a future book. Yep, both books one and two are going to be released at the same time. You won't have to wait for the second book. As I said before, once the king campaign concludes and I've delivered the content to the backers, the books will be available on my website, along with some of the extra content, but those items will be sold separately. 
If the campaign doesn't fund, the ebooks and paperbacks will definitely be available, but the hardbacks might not be available until later. Then, about three months later, I'm going to be releasing three books and another brand new series. This one is sort of steamy, cozy, multi-book series that focuses on the same characters across the entire series. Books one, two, and three will be released at the same time and follow a similar plan as the project I described for January. The series is part of the Sentinels of the Silver Orb universe, but more urban fantasy with a side of romance. Now, I happen to love Unsolved Mysteries. If there's a podcast about anything unexplained, I'm subscribing and listening to every episode. And I've always wanted to bring the elements of the unknown to my stories, but never really had a way to do so until I took a fresh approach to Wolfstrup Retribution and realized that two secondary characters were a perfect match for each other. They didn't know it. None of the other characters realized it. I'm not even sure I fully realized what was happening in the creative recesses of my mind, but the figment was there. Sarah Spears from Wolf's Retribution was supposed to pair up with another character, actually the hero in Wolf's Revenge, but Knight ended up getting a better story, so don't feel too badly for him. And Alexander made his first appearance in Broken Crown, but has made cameos in every book since. He was set to have his own story with Rowan, but when I introduced the Wizard Motorcycle Club in Broken Revenge, which you'll read about, something that happened during the reset and I had no idea I was going to introduce more wizards, much less a Wizard MC Club, Rowan no longer worked with Alexander. Plus, I think I struggled with the reason why Rowan and Alexander were together. But Sarah and Alexander, they were perfect for one another. Only Alexander had the patience to wait for Sarah to unpack her truck full of baggage, and only Sarah would feel safe with the second most powerful supernatural in the paranormal world. But their courtship couldn't be told in one book, not the way I wanted their relationship to develop. It would have to take place over several books. That led to a huge problem. Who's going to want to read a romance that will take place, take several books to reach its happily ever after? The only solution was to let them investigate all those unsolved mysteries, and maybe solve a few, and allow their romance to develop across the series. But these novels aren't romances. They're related more to cozies, except Sarah and Alexander have a steamy and tempestuous relationship, and cozies aren't supposed to be steamy, or even slightly sexy. I'm not quite sure what to call this particular genre, so I'm going with the steamy urban fantasy romantic unsolved mystery and hoping no one stops to consider just how many genres I've listed. However, I am open to suggestions for a better classification, so if you have an idea, drop me an email at jules at jakecrisser.com. So, now that the first bit is out of the way, let's get on to the next bit. The first book, The Man in the Plane. Is based on the unsolved case of D.B. Cooper. The second book is based on the Tom and Shud mystery, and the third book is based on the biggest art fraud case in the U.S. I'm really excited for this spinoff series and hope you are looking forward to them as much as I am when it comes time to reveal them to you. Then, in summer, probably August, depending on several things, such as availability of editors and cover designers and the reception of the previous projects, I'll either be releasing a brand new series or something I've been wanting to write for a while but haven't found the right opportunity. I'll be able to share more details when I get closer to the date, but I can tell you my current plan is to release the new series. However, if I think the other option is ready to go, I might release it sooner than expected. These books were supposed to be ready for 2024. Since I've taken this fresh approach to publishing for the first time ever, I am consistently ahead of schedule. Books are plotted, scenes are drafted, and series are sketched out much further than I had ever planned before. Now that I'm not fretting about how much I'm spending on ads or how much it's costing me to market a book in a series, I'm finding myself enjoying everything about publishing. From drafting an idea to formatting the designing of the interior books, it's all coming together in a way I never hoped or expected. Finally, at the end of the year, I don't plan on releasing any books instead of a project plan that's more for authors than readers. It's also about designing book interiors, typography, and other fun things. However, there is a small chance that I might put that project aside and launch a special book project instead. Keep in mind, though, 
that I'm not planning on releasing any new books at the end of the year. So that's my publishing plan for 2023. Two books in the first quarter of the year, three books in the second quarter, and then two books in the third quarter. That's seven brand new books planned for this year. And books in the same series will be released simultaneously, so you won't have to wait for the next book in the series. Now, that being said, these series won't be revisited until 2024. Unless something drastic happens with my plan for 2023, books 3 and 4, The Black Hills Vendetta, won't be available until January of 2024. The Last Immortal Mysteries, it's a working name for the series, don't worry, will continue in 2024. Well, you get the gist. Are you still here? First, thank you again. I appreciate that you're sticking around for this as long as you have. Second, let's move on to what you can expect from me and my books in 2023. Remember how I said that there was a lot more that goes into publishing a book than just writing a book? There's marketing and social media engagement and posting memes and funny pictures and sharing pictures of pets and newsletters and swapping spots and newsletters with other authors and sending out lots of newsletters. And then just when you think you have a handle on it all, you have even more pictures you need to post. And while you're doing all that, you need to push your older books, the books that authors call their backlog. You also have to work on your current book. In case you haven't figured it out, I'm not very good at most of these things. In fact, I'm really bad at them. Part of that is because some of these things aren't something that I enjoy doing, but also I feel my time and energy is better spent in the writing of stories, designing these gorgeous interiors, and doing my best to put out the best book I can as a complete package. So what does all that have to do with what you can expect from me in 2023? First, as I mentioned earlier, I plan on continuing with an audio newsletter. Once a month, I'll share a recording. It's going to be available as both a podcast and on YouTube, but I'll also send a link to the audio in my usual newsletter. Now, that doesn't mean the traditional newsletter is going away, just that I'm adding a new format. I'm going to continue to share other authors' books, but I'm also going to be sharing other Kickstarter campaigns I think you'll be interested in. And if there's a promotion going on that I think you'd like, I'll be sharing those too. What I won't be doing is sharing works in progress except during Kickstarter campaigns. That's a spoonful of sugar to go along with the blast of new newsletters you're going to receive during those campaign times. And maybe, if there's enough interest, I'll include a book talk in my audio messages, either with another author or even a reader who might be interested. I'm also hoping to start a book club. My idea is that we pick a book every month or maybe every other month and then talk about it. If I'm flipping and flopping between using a Facebook group or whether it would be worthwhile to set up a Zoom meeting, maybe. It's still very much a work in progress, but I want to get Vixen's Book Club off and running sometime in 2023 and would love any suggestions, recommendation, or even help from readers. So, if you have any ideas, send them my way. And now, on to the gigantic elephant in the room. Well, at least the giant elephant in my room. Artificial intelligence content, AI content. There's a lot of debate going on with AI art, and now AI is expanded into writing. Not that anyone would be, should be surprised. I know I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. I will never use AI-generated art or writing. My books are handwritten by a human, me. My covers are designed from licensed images, and my interiors are designed with a desktop publisher that allows me to make line-by-line -line and even word-by-word -word adjustments. And because some of the inherent risks of using AI-generated content for commercial purposes, I will never use any service that uses generated AI-generated content. And now for the books part. I already laid out my timeline and books you'll see in 2023, but I wanted to add a footnote to that section. In 2023, you'll see darker themes in Black Hills Vendetta, along with steamier sexy bits. The Immortal Mystery Files series, be a much lower heat level. There will be sex on the page, but it'll probably be less steamy than Broken Peak Back. And if I publish the books I hinted at about at the publishing plan section, I'll be going back to the characters in Broken Peak Back and revisiting their stories. I can't really share anything more than that at the moment, but I'll probably drop hints in future newsletters. So that sums up what you can expect from me during the next year. 
I'm sure I'll make adjustments as the year continues, and I'll do my best to keep everyone apprised of the situation. Thanks again to everyone for listening. Be sure to follow and subscribe to the Jules Corsair newsletter on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, or however you listen. Don't forget to leave a five-star review. To connect with Jules, visit www.jcrosair.com, where you can find her on Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, or YouTube. Just look for Jules Crusair. If you want to message the podcast directly, please send an email to podcasts at jcrosair.com. I'm Jules Crusair. See you in the next episode.